Here's part two of our conversation with the great John J.R. Robinson, one of my favorite drummers of all time. I'm John Bone from Rocky Stream Music. Like, for instance, Rock With You, there was something simplistic and very complicated. And again, in a zillion years, I would have never thought of a fill like that to open a song. I mean, where did that come from? I was inspired by Rod Temperton's demo. Rod had a demo. and Rod was very, very simplistic about his parts. For example, the bass part is the same, or or a bass part on the song Off the Wally Road. It was exactly the same part. You couldn't improvise it. Well, Quincy is a genius, and Quincy would cast a rhythm section per song, depending on the song. Well, the good news was I was the common denominator per all rhythm sections, so I was very fortunate. So sometimes I'd be playing with on Don't Stop to Get Enough with Greg Fillinganes playing Mini Moog, even though Lewis is credited on bass as an OD, or Lewis Johnson playing bass, or Bobby Watson playing bass on Rock With You. So he cast, and we were down, uh, we had started recording, and we were two weeks or so in. I had already done Girlfriend, and It's the Falling in Love, and Don't Stop to Get Enough, and then it came later, they called my band to do Rock With You. We were in uh, Westlake B, the real small room. It's where I did Lady Gaga's single last year, Stupid Love. They wanted to duplicate that. I go, damn, it takes a lot of balls to try to do that. Uh, so we're in there and we're playing and, you know, all of us know the song. And there's no Michael, but it's just, uh, you know, me, Bobby, Hawk, and David. And, you know, I programmed the click, make sure the click was right. In those old days, it was a seven-frame Yuri digital click. Got the tempo right, and so we start cutting. And I'm starting a little fill in front, and we play nothing. There's no reaction from Quincy or Rod in the booth. None. Take two. Nothing. Take three. Nothing. All of a sudden, I see Quincy stand up and Rod, and they come out. Quincy stands by me on my right shoulder, and Rod's here on my left shoulder, smoker. Excuse me, his red Marlboros, you know, in his English-German way. And Quincy just looks at me and he goes, you guys just aren't getting it. Uh, he goes, JR, can you come up with a drum fill in the beginning of this song that the whole world will forever identify and recognize this song once they hear your drum fill? And I'm going... No problem. No problem. You know, in reality, I was in my pants because that's what, that's putting me under a lot. And Rod's just, yeah, that's right. And Rod had a little thing on his demo. And, and so what I did was I thought in that five minutes before we hit take four, what am I going to do? I got four clicks and then a four beat fill. What am I going to do? It sounds simple enough. But I said, as a drummer, I hate triplets. I don't like triplets. I mean, I, I, I like to play in 6-8. I just... I mean, I could play the syncopation book blindfolded, you know. But I don't like triplets. So what I did was I decided to combine triplets with straight 16th notes. I, I did what I don't like. And so I go, okay, and you know, I'm a marching band guy. So I started it with this fill. And that's very slow, of course. I didn't know I was going to play that, but I had something in mind. So I go, all right, everybody ready? And everybody goes, yeah, ready. And I go, click, 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 click. And then all of a sudden, when you get into bar three, when you're with rhythm section, bar four, you can see people's faces just, and their auras just grow. And, and then what that does is reflects back on me going, something was right. And then we get in, and I'm like, verse, girl. And then it gets back up, and then it goes. Well, what happened was Bobby Watson's bass line was not what Rod had written. But because of what I played in the intro, he plays the most melodic bass part, I think, of any song ever. 
and have you know your fellow bass players listen. I mean, I'm granted I came up with the fill of life, a short fill, but it triggered Bobby Watson to be melodic and almost answer Michael. And it's very, very cool. What was that experience like working with this new version of who Michael Jackson was at the time? I had lost touch, I mean, just me personally, because I'm growing up too, of, of when he was writing about a rat. And little did I know that that rat song, Ben, was number one. So that shows you that the people were starred for Michael Jackson. There was just something about Michael that transcended everybody's good vibe. So when we got the call to go in, and we all converged from different areas. Jerry Hay came in, uh, Rod Tepperton, uh, Larry Williams, uh, Hawk, uh, you know, Bobby Watson, Lewis Johnson, the entire horn section, just uh, Patty Austin, Ernie Watts, and just everybody kind of converged on this situation. And then Quincy had just finished producing us, Rufus and Chaka Khan, which was Master Jam, and we went directly into Off the Wall. And my drums literally stayed there. That was the beauty of it. It was great. And Quincy, I, I was telling somebody yesterday, Quincy would like take us like like Coach Andy Reid, Chiefs, baby! And he would huddle us, and, and Greg Fellingans, of course, and David Williams, and he would huddle us up, and he'd go, I don't want any B-sides on this record. I want all hits. And for you young people, a B-side was generally, if, if you even got a B-side, any sort of a hit record, you'd make a lot of money, even though you, your song could suck. Well, they don't have that anymore. Actually, they do. They're actually pressing vinyl again, so there could be B-sides, but it's, it's not like it used to be. So we go, okay, we got 10, 11 songs in this record. All of them are going to be hits. And sure enough, all of them were hits. And that's kind of uh, how it went down. Didn't you go in with preconceived ideas? I mean, it was little Michael, even though he was older. What was your first thought of working with that? Did you trust Quincy? You just said, let's do it? What? I think the, the first thought was, remember, they brought me in on a Thursday by myself to overdub on two tunes. So if I hadn't had that experience under my belt, I may have not been great on that following day, sir, that following Monday. So, you know, I, I overdubbed on Girlfriend, girlfriend you know really really poppy it's the falling in love which was david and carol barrow sager and i nailed them both and and i think they were looking at it so they threw me the two worst friggin songs on the record to do so i didn't think about that until just now you know don't stop hadn't been created yet and then that's when the talk back went down and they go what are you doing monday and i go nothing and you do you want to come in and do the rest of the record? And I go, yes. So that's when Monday I came in and met Greg, Greg Fillingains, and he and I cut Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Yeah. That's an and amazing, that, that whole thing is just, that's just mind-blowing, that song. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funky. And it's absolutely so funky. And we looked at each other when we had finished it, and we looked at each other, and, and we, we knew we had just cut a number one record. Yeah. You, you can't know, help so but stare at the speakers. That's one of those songs that if it comes on, you're going, what? Huh? Yeah. There was just something about a Bruce Wedeen and his ears were just ridiculous on this record. And, uh, you know, I think maybe possibly that and the dude were, and, and maybe some Basie records were uh, Bruce's, you know, greatest records. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Mm -hmm.